Have a seat. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm Mong Chin. Um, thank you so much for taking time to come down today. Yeah. Well, have a seat, Mong Chin. So, Mong Chin, I hear you just landed today. Yeah, actually, a few hours ago. So, yeah. very, how was the flight? Was it smangat? Uh, yeah, it was good. It's just an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. I took off and landed. I forget sometimes Singapore is just, it's like a different country, but it's actually so near, right? Yeah. Now, anyways, um, once again, you must be very excited. I am. I mean, yeah. your own show. Um, how does it feel to have your own TV series on Lifetime? Um, surreal, honestly. I mean, um, this is my first TV show, and I honestly am so honored. And um, it's a dream that it's such a big skill. I get to meet so many amazing people, work with such amazing crew, and I'm very proud to be able to represent women um, in this show. Yeah. The concept of the show is fascinating. Six runs, six countries, eight weeks. Yep. <laughs> After all of that was done, do you feel like anything's changed for you? Uh, of course. I mean, I think I became fitter. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think there's no way about it around it um, once you complete six runs. I'm a lot tanner now as well. And I think most importantly, I got a lot of newfound respect for people in this industry. So um, honestly, because I am not from this industry, it is my first time working on a TV production and something so big scale. Um, I never knew so many things went behind the scenes and it's really um, respectable, so yeah. Very, very cool stuff. Now, Who Runs the World was truly a digital first series where you were constantly sharing uh, IG stories, updates, and asking the fans for recommendations, even as you were shooting the series. So what was that like having, I guess, all this new influx of information when you're already on a shoot? Um, very cool, actually. This is um, the first digital first approach kind of TV series. And when we say digital first, meaning usually for conventional TV, you always get to see the, the final product only when it's like fully polished and on TV. But um, Who Runs the World is different in the sense I get to share with my followers my experience while shooting. And like while I was doing all these you know crazy things, I was like in the story and asking them like, hey, um, where else should I go next? What would you recommend? Which cafe, um, you know, would you recommend in Kuala Lumpur? You know, and all that. And they would give me some recommendations, and we did actually pay some um, some of these places a uh, visit. Imagine you had like an entire array of behind the scenes stuff <laughs> going on as you were shooting. Very, yeah. very nice. Now, have you actually seen anything from the show yet? The final polished um, product. I've only seen like a little bit of the first episode, the rest no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> well, this yeah. is great. That'll be a first for everybody in this room. It is. Uh, because we have a very um, special little preview prepared uh, to give you guys a taste of what you can expect from the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to the screens. Um, although I do not fly very officially, but I still have to go. Um, yeah. I almost cried. That, that was, that was <laughs> but quite fun. Scary. Yeah, it really was, right? <laughs> like we had to get hoist up and you needed a lot of arm strength to like really hang on to your life. <laughs> yeah. And then you had to one, two, three, let go. And that was the hardest, the most difficult part. Especially because it's like your choice, right? To let yeah. Go. Like normally, why would you let go, right? Yes, I don't want to let go. You can ask her, like, yeah. can I not let go? Let go, okay, just like hang here for a bit. Yeah, that video was really cut short by uh, quite yeah. a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so um, of course it's very good that the two of you see each other again now. Before we go any further, just a couple of questions for Nana, really quickly. Now, Nana, obviously, Mongchen came to you for uh, a little support, I guess, for the Sad Childhood Marathon. Um, how did you help the train for the marathon? What did the two of you do? Okay, um, well, because when she was here, the marathon and the, the run was pretty close to the date. And I told her, well, I'm not going to stress you out, we're just going to have fun, you know, let loose, and yeah, not so much using her lower body parts because I don't want her to get sore and stuff. Um, before that, I would like to say um, hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for being here for Mall. Uh, it's a big day for her. Um, and yes, um, just have fun. Very, very nice. Now, of course, uh, for the show, you are the Malaysian representative. 
the ambassador for the show, like, right? representing, you know, Malaysia. Now, was there anything uniquely Malaysian that you would, uh, did you get the chance to recommend anything for Mong Chin to try? Or, or if you didn't, what would it be? What would you recommend she do? Okay, it was pretty short. Uh, we were just like having fun at District uh, 21 and then we didn't get to go out and have fun outdoors and stuff. But I mean, if she's here again, I don't know, maybe tomorrow or like next week or whenever that we hang out together again, I would definitely take her to like Tamanagara to explore more, um, Batu Cave to experience more rock climbing, and then, you know, take her to some local dishes that's really, you know, Delicious. <laughs> it's very, a must. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. So, um, Wong Chin, for yourself, um, your encounter with Nana during the show, is there anything in particular that you, you feel like you learned from her? Um, definitely, because she taught me that um, it was very important to, you know, eat well, um, you know, warm up properly before you go into anything. So that's what we really did. And most importantly, have fun. So I think that short few hours with Nana was like probably the most fun we had. Yeah, because um, I didn't realize how working out can be so fun if you actually have like a really nice and encouraging partner that can, you know, just spur you along the way the whole time. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> There's obviously a lot of chemistry and a lot of love that these two have for each other. That's very, very good. I can't wait to see the, the Malaysia episode, actually. Um, now, as neighboring countries, naturally, Malaysia, Singapore, we're both very similar, but we also got our differences. A bit of a little bit of a friendly rivalry, but also a lot of love because of a shared mutual Just history. Love. Yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, did you experience anything new while shooting the KL episode? Actually, this entire show, um, I tried so many like new things for the first time. Um, KL was actually um, my first run, like my first organized run. Uh, the Standard Chartered Marathon in Kuala Lumpur was my first ever organized run that I, I signed up for. That was the 10 kilometers. There was one, came to Juan Valdez, and I did my first latte art. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, and this is the most important. Interesting one, I got to drive a Lamborghini. What? Yeah, so they surprised me with a Lamborghini right outside here, and I drove it in the KL traffic, which was really scary. Really, really scary. I mean, on top of that, I was driving like a really um, luxurious car that I don't want to <laughs> damage. Yeah, but uh, the, the traffic was also quite difficult to drive in. I also yeah. imagine, even though it's right here, so if you look at the scene, I look very familiar. Some of you are sitting on a legitimate TV show set. <laughs> right now. So feel free to take advantage of that bit of information. <laughs> now, of course, the, the whole uh, series was done with the Canon EOS M15 mirrorless camera, capturing all your Instagram-worthy moments and shaping it with the world. Has that experience changed your uh, perspective on photography? Um, definitely. Um, okay, I mean, because I've, I've been a big Canon user for many, many, many years, um, this Canon EOS M15 is very different in a sense. I, I actually got to vlog with it the whole time during the shoot. Like even when I was running, I was vlogging with that camera because it's so light, it's so handy. But at the same time, I was very shocked that you know a lot of the footage from the M15 was actually put into TV use. Oh, wow. So yeah, because of the 4K resolution, um, video resolution, so it's quite amazing that a small compact camera can do that. Like, yeah. So like for a, for a random lay person like me, like, take pictures all a bit not so nice, want to go up the Instagram game, not every day you get to talk to legitimate 150,000 Instagram followers, uh, <laughs> influencers, wondering like, what would, what would your tips be like in terms of like, you know, taking better pictures? Taking better pictures, um, personally for me, because I'm not a professional photographer, um, my style would usually be, like, my aim is to tell a story with my photos, so I will always use um, other elements like the background or props that are related to that story that I'm trying to tell. So for example, if I'm taking a food shot, it would not just be like a plate of like, you know, I'll have like some cutlery with me at the side, I'll have maybe the background setting of this cafe, you know, one look you can tell I'm in a cafe and I'm enjoying food, you know, I'm not like at some random white background plays or whatever. Yeah, I mean, of course, there are um, instances where those kind of backgrounds will look good for the photo if it's like a very complicated, colorful piece of like um, painting, you know, and you don't want it to, to clash with other things, then maybe a white background would be good. But most of the time, I like to tell a story yeah, using other elements, yeah. 
But the both of you, obviously, the both of you also have very sizable Instagram following, both of you influencers. Uh, just, just a question, and this one directed to both of you, Nana and Mongjin. Uh, what do you guys look out for when it comes to what makes a good looking photo? Maybe, maybe you can go first, Nana. <laughs> Well, I like to tell a story, um, especially when I do videos, um, even photos, it has to, I mean, have a hidden uh, messages behind it. It's not necessarily for it to look just good, you know. Um, I'm always all about women empowerment, uh, independence, and, you know, positivity and happiness. So in every photos, although like sometimes, you know, it's a little bit abstract or like it's all about fitness, uh, posting and stuff, I always try to inject, you know, not just a softness, um, sort of like element in the picture because whenever people look at me uh, when I'm wearing dresses, you know, in my sports attire, they always think that I'm, I'm huge and I'm like bulky and I look manly. So I try to incorporate like feminine um, softness and um, while vulnerability. Sorry, I got this so <laughs> So yeah, um, yes, I think. And also angle, right? Mm. Angle and lighting. Yes, angle, angle and lighting. Th lighting is really important. You do not want to look, you know, cute, but <laughs> too cute. You know what I mean? <laughs> Especially for Nana, when she does all the fitness um, kind of photography. There's actually this one segment that we are going to see in the show where um, I give tips on how to make your abs Yeah. Show. Wow. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Nana already has apps. It's hard no, to make it right not show. So if you don't have apps, still can yeah. come out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you must have a little bit, like, if not, you have to use makeup. <laughs> but uh, it's how, like, angles and lighting really makes a lot of difference. Yeah. So um, there's one segment in the show where I use Nana as my model, um, where I position her, like, I show, like, a bad example versus a good example, and how it can really enhance, like, her physique and her apps. Yeah, and personally for me, um, because I do a lot of beauty, lifestyle, fashion type of um, photos and content, um, my my go-to would just be like composition and really just telling a story. Like I don't really curate my posts that much. I don't really plan like, oh, today I'm going to post this, tomorrow I'm going to post this. I, I don't really care that much about how it's going to flow in my feed. You know, how some influencers are really very, very up in their Instagram game that yeah. they're and her feet is like so consistent, like there has a color team and like everything. But for me, I think um, I want to use my account as some, like a, a peek into my real life. Yeah, so whatever I'm doing, where I'm at, you will be able to see it through my Instagram. Yeah. Very, very cool. Like it's the whole you do you kind yeah, of Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get it, I get it. So out of the various types of pictures, and I imagine you take everything from beauty to food to travel shots and everything. Do you have a particular favorite type of picture that you like to take? Um, travel photography. I mean, there really isn't really a favorite, but more of like the moment. Yeah. So whatever is more memorable for me, whatever I want to um, capture and remember that moment forever, I will take it. Yeah. Very, very cool. So once again, this next question for the both of you. Can I say you two look phenomenal? Don't they look great, guys? Thank you. All right, so I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, ask how, how do you guys do it? Like if I could achieve a little bit of this physique, I mean, I would be very happy also. You're asking about physique? No, no, I'm asking how do you look looking so good while working out? You know what I mean? How do you keep looking so good? Okay, um, how do I look so good while working out? Yeah. I don't think I look good while working out. Like, I, do you, okay, I mean, do you think I look good? Nana looks good while she works out because she's so effortless while there's me just panting and like going like, Nana, stop killing me and, and stuff. But I think it really is just have fun and know your limits. Um, nobody knows your body better than yourself. So know when to stop um, when it's really enough. Yeah. Okay, okay. So in terms of like um, like food intake and stuff like that, I know Nana, you got a lot of that like great advice for, for like healthy nutrition and stuff like that. So any particular tips and stuff? For for just like general being general, healthy. Yeah. Okay, uh, for me it really depends on individuals. I never um, say that this diet is good, this diet works, that diet works. Every diet works. What makes it doesn't work is how people can't stick to it. Yeah. So I mean we live in Malaysia or like Singapore, you know 
we are, you know, we have a lot of delicious food, creamy stuff, curries, the asam pedas and stuff, and we can't change our palate and then just suit like the Western, right? So I always, uh, whenever I do my workshops or my seminars or my talk, I always, um, you know, advise people to just pick something that you can stick to throughout your life. You know, the rest of your life, that's what's going to make it work. So, but yeah, of course, a lot more uh, green veggies, water is really important, um, detoxification naturally is really important, and yeah, just just have fun with your diet. Don't be stressed out, because if you're stressed out, then you're going to put on more weight, so yeah. That's good advice. Now, uh, Mongshin, I also know that um, before every run, you were, you were given a special something to, uh, uh, yeah. to get a bit of a boost. I hear that that's the secret to the <laughs> stamina. <laughs> Not really stamina, but really energy. Mm -hmm. So that secret is Good Day Church. Um, it's a really delicious, yummy chocolate milk. Um, actually, I don't even... Uh, it's, it's like part of my routine now. Um, every time before I do any strenuous workout, the producer will be like, Mom, have this. And, and it really, really works. Yeah, because it has... It gives me a lot more energy um, and it fills my tummy without, you know, eating, t I, I don't usually eat too much before like I run a huge run, mm -hmm. so having something like that would be sizable and good enough for the entire run. Yeah. Yeah, and chocolate, right? <laughs> it makes you happy. <laughs> There we go. So if you're wondering about that good day charge action, now I think you, you will or you haven't given goodie bags, you will get a taste of it, you, you have some, so get ready to get charged as well, because if you feel good, uh, you look good. That's a good philosophy, yeah. I think. Now, uh, thank you so much for answering the questions. Now, ladies and gentlemen um, of the press, at this particular moment, we're opening up the floor. If you have a question, please raise your hands. Uh, we'll hand a mic over to you, and then we will get you know either to... No, no, I'm not sure. um, it would be the Spartan race. I actually completed the Spartan race in Cebu, Philippines, and um, that was really, really tough. Like, if all of you guys know where the Spartan race is, it's an obstacle course. Um, I had to complete a lot, a lot of obstacles, and it's really meant for the super, super fit and um, very strong, will-powered people. And yeah, I survived. So that was really tough. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, because I knew I was gonna be on TV. So that really helped me because I have to complete it, right? I mean, I cannot, um, I, I mean, you, you get what I mean, right? Like I have to push myself and I know that a lot of thousands of people are gonna be watching me, they are gonna be looking to me um, to represent them, you know, as someone who have not tried all these things before and I just wanna show them that you can actually do it even though it's your first time, as long as you put your mind and your heart to doing it, you will be able to, it's just about, how long you take to get there, but as long